Hey guys, welcome back. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys the midwinter update on our mature American chestnut trees. Right here behind me, we have a fallen soldier, so we'll start with it. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. Here we have our largest of the mature American chestnut trees. This tree sadly succumbed to the blight two years ago, but we still have some shoots hanging on. Sadly, which this was awesome in the last video I made about these trees, we have a fat canker. This is proof of blight resistance right here. Anyone claims this tree does not, that tree does not have blight resistance. Yes, it does. That is a fat canker. I know what it is. That's blight resistance right there. When you have a fat canker, it's tissue trying to fight off the blight. So right there, that is proof of blight resistance. Sadly, it broke off because of our horrible wind here. And anyone says, oh, because it was dead, that's why it broke off. No, it broke off because of the wind. See, it's green right there. Yeah, the wind was so horrible that it broke off. But right here, this right here is proof of blight resistance. That is very good blight resistance right there. And that's why this tree lived so long. I'm guessing this is why this tree lived so long. This tree had a fight with blight for years, as I can see. This is callus layer, I'm pretty sure. So when there was blight, when there was blight, this was growing over it and trying to shut it up. But eventually the blight won the war by going the whole way around and girdling the tree. And I guess the growth tissue was just not enough to fight it off. Because I am pretty sure that this is callus layer. I might be wrong and it might not be, but it looks like it is callus layer. I could be wrong, but I, I don't know. But I will say there's definitely lots of them. Um, yeah, I would say that is callus layer down there. Because look right here. Right there, that's some callus layer. Or was, and now the bark's falling off it. And it was trying to close that gap up. Like up here too, there's some callus layer. This has been a war with this tree. The tree was discovered like three years ago, I think. But this fight with the blight has been going on for maybe ten years. There's a chipmunk. I don't know if you saw that. I got distracted for a second. Yeah, but right here, this tree's just... It tried. It tried its best. And you have all these shoots right here. I just go over these trees each time because there's some people that are new here and don't know anything about it. So I always try to show you guys once again. But overall, nothing's changed. It's it's dead. <laughs> it's pretty much dead. Other than... um. Other than our limbs right, the, other than our one shoot right here, which should try to graft on this tree. Maybe this will eventually get big enough to produce nuts. I don't know. You can see right there, it's trying to fight the blade off. But yeah, I don't, anyone that says this tree doesn't have blight, I don't see how it wouldn't considering it's been girdled by something. Right there, callus layer. That right there is a sign of blight resistance. Or blight, blight tolerance. I guess there's a difference in the words. But overall, nothing's changed. That one limb, though, this limb's only like two years, this limb's only like two, two years old and it's already way up there. I guess it's because there's a great root system, but it's going to be girdled because there's only this much left of tissue. So this whole trunk doesn't have too long left. These limbs can survive for a little bit longer, but that's awesome right there. All right, guys, let's get on to the, the next tree. Here we have my favorite out of all these American chestnut trees because this one is the biggest living one. Also, the healthiest looking one, and it is getting bigger and bigger as the years go on. On borrowed time, probably, but really, from here, I haven't looked at the tree yet in months, but... I don't see any blight attacks so far, so let's take a closer look at the tree. I want to say something. Someone told me this was an Allegheny cheeky pin, which I do not believe it is. First off, there's more than one nut in the burrs. Secondly, this tree is really big. Allegheny cheeky pins are dwarf trees. This tree continues to grow in height. Yeah, I am pretty sure this is not an Allegheny cheeky pin. I also asked a guy that my guy that I get chestnuts from, he's kind of an expert, and he told me that this was, he told me this is not an Allegheny cheeky pin, and that this was an American chestnut. 
there's many reasons that also I'm not even in the range of the cheeky pin. The range of the cheeky pin is way down is down from me though, probably like 60, 70 miles. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is an American chestnut. If I didn't think it was, I wouldn't have made a single video on it. <laughs> I would have made cheeky pin videos. But looking over here, um, this is the biggest like cracks, and someone said this wasn't a blight wound. But considering like that sunken in layer, I think this was a blight wound. It doesn't look bad, really. You can see that, I don't know, might just pack it just in case. Overall, I don't really see anything. Eh, there's some sunken cracks right there. But don't really look too bad. Some of these are growth cracks, not light. But this tree's looking, <clears throat> looking decent. I don't see anything concerning. So this tree will definitely get another year of nuts out of it. Hopefully our little friend over there actually can pollinate this year. I mean, we got like seven nuts this year which i haven't checked the bag but we had one that had a root on it so i'll have to check the other ones but we've already got offspring but the problem with the offspring i've gotten off it is sometimes american chestnuts can pollinate themselves okay they usually don't but sometimes they can and when they pollinate themselves the genetics aren't as good so we may have got some offspring off this tree but the genetics may not be the best so we we will see but what i'm looking forward to is not just this is not just this tree pollinating itself but is the little tree over there we'll get over to in a minute actually being able to pollinate this tree giving us a giant crop of nuts hopefully this fall but we'll get to that in a minute so overall the tree is looking rather rather great nothing concerning really um, there's some cracks up there. Sometimes it's hard to deficiate. I don't know the words I'm trying to use. Try to see if it is blight or if it is grow cracks. But overall, this tree looks like it's potentially blight free so far. I don't want to jinx it, but overall it looks good so far. So this tree definitely has some, I'd say it has some resistance. I mean, I don't really know yet because I haven't really seen a canker too bad on it this could have been a canker who knows the other tree definitely had blight but this one this one may not have had blight it may just been a well i don't know i go back and forth on saying this tree's already had blight because of like that sunken in crack right there my brother filled the dim in mud and then i guess that's what made it heal up because before i ever even saw this tree he already packed all the things he thought were blight with mud but we are growing great I can see the beefiness of the tree getting bigger each and every year. And the tree's still looking good. Let's just hope this tree can last long enough to be pollinated by its sister tree or brother tree. Well, that doesn't sound right. Pollinated by its friend over there. Right here we have a very, very, very important little guy. Right here in the middle. I don't know how well I'm picking this up, but... It's in front of that bigger tree. The problem with this tree has been that maple and this maple blocking sunlight, not allowing our friend right there to pollinate. Let's go over here and take a look. Overall, this little guy looks pretty good. I don't really see anything that is concerning on it. It's starting to get beefier each and every year and going straight up. Yeah, if like if this is an Allegheny cheeky pin, I don't think it would have such an upright growth pattern. And I think Allegheny cheeky pins only get what, like 40 feet tall? Not exactly sure, but yeah. Upright growth pattern, upright growth pattern, American chestnut. We're getting nice straight growth. Well, except for that curve right there, but you get the point. It's still going straight up. But the problem, once again, has been this maple blocking sunlight and that maple blocking sunlight. If these two are out of the way, it'll go right up through that hole. So what we did was we notched around here 
But yet yeah, these two trees, or these, I guess, four trees, still produced leaves this year, still blocking our sunlight. These are probably just going to have to be dropped just that way. There's, yeah, it would be easy to drop them that way. They're actually so small, they could probably be dropped with a, dropped with an axe or a handsaw. Maybe not that one, but that one, that one's rather tiny, so that one could be dropped with a handsaw. This one probably could too, tie a rope to something, or have a really long rope and have someone pull it or something. And those two are tiny as well. So they're not really hard to drop and get out of here. I just haven't had time to get rid of them yet. But yeah, they're keeping the, they're definitely keeping the sunlight away from our little guy. But this tree is looking, this tree is looking great and getting some good growth on it. But very important to pollinating our healthy American chestnut tree over there. Okay guys, here we are at the <coughs> giant rock once again. That was cleaned off by my cousin and my brother. Probably wasn't a good idea to clean it off because, you know, it might deteriorate the rock. But it's already covered in leaves again. There's a stick on it. But overall, I just wanted to talk about this rock for a second. It's nice and big and cool. And now let's get to the trees that are down here. Sorry about that little distraction. That is a really cool rock. Just look at that. It's almost flat. You could almost put something on it. All right, going down the hill right here. Here we have a smaller American chestnut tree. That's looking decent. I don't see anything like concerning on it. Um, I don't know. Some might be grow cracks. It's getting decently tall. It'll go out that hole right there. It has plenty of room. I wish this one limb wasn't above it, but nothing I can really do. The brush is good around it because the brush keeps the deer from horning the tree. I probably should put some protective around these trees because it's like the perfect size for a deer to for a deer to destroy. But overall the tree looks good. I don't see anything anything concerning with it. It's just a little guy. Now let's head up the hill and we will look at its sister tree. Going up the hill, we have this little guy. This one doesn't look as healthy as the other one, but it's getting some, it's getting some height on it. But its problem is all of these cracks and this darkened, this darkness right here. It didn't really have that last year and it's getting a little worse. So I'm not sure if this tree is suffering from blight or if this is normal. I'm not really sure. I'd say, okay, I could pack it, but at the same time, I don't see anything that looks like it's harmful. I don't, these aren't deep. These just kind of look like grow cracks, but I'm not sure. But the darkened layer is kind of, I don't like it. But overall, it doesn't, it's not dead. Um, it doesn't look too bad. This is the first, these are second generation trees off those two big ones up there that we discovered last year by accident they don't look doesn't look too bad i mean right there that's kind of deep but it could just be grow cracks not sure just have to keep an eye on it this one definitely needs protected too so the deer don't rub it because that would definitely be a death sentence but it has a nice hole right there to shoot up out of hopefully one day get nuts from these two trees if this one and you can't even see that and that one down there survives. These trees hopefully will produce someday. But it doesn't look too bad now. I'm not really too concerned yet. But I don't know what that darkness is. It's kind of on this too where there's nothing. So this tree could have blight. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. But it'd be nice to someday see these two trees produce together. Yeah, these are second generations off those other ones. Hopefully these trees will produce the third generation. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys like the updates on the mature American chestnut trees. Well, there's only two mature ones, but that's that's what we call these videos because we got this little guy right here and that one's still standing, so that makes two. So the mature American chestnut trees. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy these videos. I love coming out here and making a video about these trees. This tree is getting bigger as we speak. Well, 
it doesn't grow in the winter, but you know what I mean. We're getting, we're getting some good growth. So I really appreciate you guys. Make sure as always to drop a like on this video, hit that notification bell and subscribe for more content. Go ahead and watch some more videos because it really helps me in the algorithm when you like, when you watch, when you watch the whole way through, it really helps. And we are getting close to monetization again. We were like 300 and something watch hours away. So every time you watch a video the whole way through, you know, that keeps, keeps adding up to our watch hours and we're getting close. So I'd really like to be monetized sometime next month. Is it going to happen? Well, it's up to me to make more videos, but I would really like it to happen. So if you guys could help me out with that. All right, guys. As always, don't forget to keep it electrified. I'll see y'all later.